G'day ladies and gentlemen, tonight the king, or dare I say the prime minister of social justice warriors everywhere, Justin Trudeau, has gone blackface and it's hilarious because he's a massive hypocrite. We're going to cover that story. We're also going to talk about VidCon. Is it a scam? And I'll tell you why I think that. And don't forget, we're going to talk about Area 51. What actually happened when the Area 51 swarm happened? I've got a reporter on the ground. All that tonight and more when we head into the Butterfield News Broadcast Service Systems. I think I got it right. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, tonight in YouTube news, the recovery is underway by YouTube after they took away the verification ticks from YouTubers everywhere. They said, listen, you don't deserve that unless you've got a big following, a big audience. Uh, you need to have newspaper articles about you. You need to be a real brand. And they took mine away. Don't know why they fucking did that. But they did do a backflip. And they said, no, we're not going to take it away anymore. We're going to leave it where it is. We're going to keep it how it currently is. And I think that's fantastic. Why? Not only do I get a tick and all that shit and who gives a rat's, but it means that YouTube is listening. It's listening to the creators and it's listening to the audience. Because no one actually asked for that. No one wanted it. And that's great news. Not so great news for YouTubers, though, is VidCon. Now, VidCon recently, this weekend, ventured to Australia. It was packed full of creators and, you know, people like, oh, the fucking Try Guys. The Try Guys were there. Yeah, great, wonderful, fantastic. Georgia Productions was there. I love Georgia. She's great. Hank Green, I'm pretty sure he's the guy who runs the show. Scotty from uh, David Dobrik's vlogs. He's great. Uh, we also had Alex Hayes. He's fantastic. Good on him. The Fairbarn Films, massively overrated YouTubers. They absolutely stink. Love you. <laughs> um, but talking about people that absolutely stink, uh, they also had Jamie Zhu was there. Jamie Zhu, who was an absolute piece of shit. Uh, Jimmy Jackson, uh, cheer, bro. Uh, they also had Superwog, the two brothers there, uh, and uh, Aussie Man Reviews. Fantastic, wonderful. Now that is the lineup of the Australian version of VidCon. Now, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because of the ticket price. Now, <clears throat> you can get access to VidCon for between $70 and $750. $750 if you want to get in there and you're an industry guy and you want to meet people and do business, I guess. $70 if you're a uni student or a student and you want to go in just for one day. Now, everything in between, there's different price points. And on top of the ticket sales, they've also got major sponsors like Sennheiser. They've got Joby. They've got Nickelodeon, MTV. Who else they got? Logitech. Big money we're talking about here. None of the YouTubers, none of the people that the people are there to see, that are lining up for hours to see, are making any of that money. Now, sure, some of the big guys from America, maybe they're getting paid. But everyone that I've spoken to, Australian-based people at VidCon, they didn't get paid. They just got offered a free trip, which is great. Everyone likes a free trip. But also, those people are there to see you. And you're not getting paid. And they take a 30% cut of your merch. That is fucked up. That is absolutely bullshit. Now, VidCon is not associated with YouTube at all. This is just some private company that is running this shit. Pull your fucking heads in. I think this is absolutely dodgy as. A music festival, if they have bands on, particularly big bands, they pay them. They don't just give them a free holiday. That is shit. I'd love to know your opinion down below. Let me know in the comment section. Do you think this is a scam? Or do you think it's good to be able to network? Or do you think I'm just jealous because I didn't get an invite? Fuck them. <laughs> anyway, moving on. We need to talk about Area 51. Now, I brought this up in a video just about a month ago. One million people have responded to a Facebook event saying that on the 20th of September 2019, they will storm. Area 51, the swarming of Area 51, the countless individuals that were going to jump the gate and run through and Nerudo run straight through there. And the time has come, ladies and gentlemen. So let's check out what is happening at Area 51. I've got my own reporter there because I'm very, very, very professional, ladies and gentlemen. Please make welcome to the show for the first time, Mike Goldman, live from Area 51. Yes. Hello, Mike Goldman here reporting for Isaac Butterfield, Butsman News. I'm actually back in Las Vegas now. About two and a half hours ago, I was at the front gate of Area 51. There's a massive alien stock party going on. There's all sorts of freaks. There's people starting cults. There's people setting up stalls, giving away free DVDs on how the government is stealing all of their free energy and how the government are keeping you know, technology secrets away from them and keeping aliens 
away from them and uh, it's kind of a failure to be honest there weren't that many people there and I, I'm pretty sure the reason for that being is the guy who started the Facebook page that was called uh, Area 51 let's storm Area 51 uh, they can't stop us all let's see them aliens he sold out to Las Vegas and decided to start his own gig and got paid by downtown Las Vegas and undisclosed sum of money uh, a lot of people there I was talking to today really don't like him because he left them out in the cold, including the lady who owns the Little Alien, which is where Alien stock is being held. Anyway, I'm off to the Art I Heart Radio concert here in Las Vegas, and I have no idea who's playing. I'll report back next week. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hope you don't get shot. Now to tonight's top story. It's all about Justin Trudeau. We're a country built on diversity, a country that knows that we're stronger together, embracing our differences and using our collective power to drive change. Gender equality is under attack. And I can only imagine how hard it is to be a feminist on the front lines. The man behind Canada's weird gender laws. I'm proud to announce that tomorrow, on the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia, we will be tabling a bill in the House of Commons to ensure the full protection of transgender people. The male feminist. I'm going to keep saying loud and clearly that I am a feminist uh, <laughs> until, until it is met with a shrug. Uh, why does every time I say I'm a feminist, uh, you know, the Twitterverse explodes? And now it turns out the enormous hypocrite because he has had photos surface over the last few days of him in blackface and everyone thinks it's fucking hilarious, including me. Cop that dickhead. Now to that new trouble for Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. A picture of him wearing dark, uh, wearing dark makeup. Dark makeup. Okay, okay, okay. Dark makeup. Now this is a report from a reputable news source. Now, would they say, just as an example, that this is dark makeup if, say, Donald Trump dressed like this? No, they'd say it's blackface. Okay. Don't fucking lie to people. This is what it is. This guy was in blackface. Simple as that. So are we supposed to just, hang on. <laughs> I can't go on. I need to show you a meme. Forget this video, this piece of, ex this example I was gonna show you. Have a look at this meme. It's fucking fantastic. <laughs> Bravo internet, you have done it again. <laughs> but here's where this story takes an amazing, amazing turn and it's marvelous, but this is what happens. The skeletons in the closet came out because there was two other photos that surfaced from different times when Justin Trudeau was also wearing blackface. Why is this your go-to costume, dude? But this is my favorite quote. Unacceptable because of the racist history of blackface. I should have understood that then. Uh, and I never should have done it. You told us last night on the plane that you were that uh, of all of the different instances that you recalled, have you since been made aware or remembered of other instances? And if so, how many? I am wary of of uh, being definitive about this because the uh, recent pictures that came out, I had not remembered. To paraphrase what he just said, he doesn't know how many times he went blackface. How do you lose count of that? <laughs> Fuck you, Justin Trudeau. You deserve all of this, you absolute wanker. But Justin Trudeau is not this week's fuck you to the moon. This week's fuck you to the moon comes from a doctor. And her name is Jennifer Gunther. And she posted these two tweets which went sort of viral and they're fucked up, right? She goes, me talking to a guy on the phone explaining that I've been married twice. My son Victor walks into the room. That's because... No man can tame you. Who the fuck says that to their mum, number one? But number two, the second tweet is just fan marvel tass fucking tick. All right? This was from a day later in the same thread. My boys are so awesome. A few months ago, I was getting ready for a date and Oliver said, Does he know that you have big sexual energy? My reply... I think he's counting on it. Who the fuck says that to their mum? All right, that's fucked up. 
Mrs. Gunther, leave your kids alone from your rooting around the bloody joint, all right? Let them live their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, fuck her to the moon. Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Bit extinct. And thank you for joining us here on the Butterfield News Broadcast Service Systems for this week. We'll see you all next week and probably for another video tomorrow. And don't forget, the podcast is coming up again this week. Make sure you check it out.